Hi everyone and welcome to our Thursday night uh, online life group uh, gathering. Uh, we are uh, or have been uh, kind of like separated since the lockdown, but we are connected. We might be separated, but we are connecting through the social uh, media platforms. And so we want to just welcome you on this um, Thursday night. And once again, it's a, just an opportunity for us to gather together uh, with your families, with friends, with relatives, and just to gather around uh, the Word of God. And tonight, uh, my wife Joy is with me as well. Yes, and, and welcome gonna... to everyone, and welcome to everybody from Phoenix and all the folk there, and everyone watching yeah. from our Hillcrest campus. Welcome from our home to your home once again. Mm -hmm. It's always an honor and a privilege for us to be with you on a Thursday night and just talk about God's word because, yeah, you know, just, it's, it's um, only God's word that can change us. It's only God's word that can help us. That's right. And so it's always wonderful just being able to share and thank you for tuning in and mm. using your data and we don't want to um, be on yeah. too long and, um, you know, use too much of it. So, yes, no, we'll yeah. just be for 30 minutes, like we said, yes, just an so opportunity welcome. for us to get together and right from the beginning, I want to just take this time as well to welcome those of you that are, are on the Facebook platform. Uh, welcome to you, uh, Brother Vasu. Good evening to you yes. and your family. George Clark uh, is watching. And Vanita, Great to have you with us. She's watching. And Agnes Matthew. is on as well. Cyril is on as well. Sally, good evening to you. Mary is watching. Uh, Bronwyn Finn is on. Kurt Davis, good, uh, good evening to you. Leanne. Uh, is watching as well. Uh, Chanel is watching. Uh, Debbie Finn uh, Pops is watching all the way uh, from um, Chatsworth, as is Chris. Uh, hello, Margaret hello. Dobble down the south coast is watching. Arnoth is watching. Good evening to Carol as well. Stella's on. Jackie is on. Shada, as always, is on. Um, Yvonne and Gopal our is on. Are on. Our yeah, all our pastors, all our pastors are, are on as well. So and just to remind us, well, that they are there available to pray yes, for you. I you see that our that. cat has joined us uh, for this live broadcast <laughs> as well. So she's um, eager it. to hear what um, what going what on. is going to happen in God's word. <laughs> Dina, I see you're on as well. Good evening to you. And uh, Venetia is on. Uh, Ashina is on. Matthew Miller is on. Many of you that are joining on. Uh, and just invite and encourage. If you, if you know uh, somebody from the church and they're not on the platforms, whether it be Facebook or YouTube. Not that we want to get the numbers up, but we want yes. to just make sure that people are connecting. And in this way, we're staying in fellowship. That's right. All right. And then uh, not only that, but on the YouTube platform, we do have several folk that are watching. Good evening to you. Charlene is watching. Beverly Naidu is on. And John, good evening to you. And she says, ready to do life group together. That's right. And I remember Pastor Fred sharing the acronym for life group, L-I-F-E. And it's basically living in fellowship and, and then at the same time also evangelizing. Right. And um, tonight we're going to continue with, um, you know, soul winning and how to specifically pray for the lost. Mm. And I think that that's something that is very key, very vital, that those that you are trusting God for, they don't necessarily need to know that you're praying for them. Okay. And we don't need to really make a big deal about it. But I do believe that in our quiet time, we need to um, be open for God to lay on our hearts those that, you know, he's brought into your path. There's a reason why there are people in your world. And there are people in your world that are not in my world. Mm. And there's a reason for that, more so if they are not saved. And if they are saved, then our job is even to disciple those who are saved. So people are very precious when it comes to God. Right. And, uh, and so praying for the lost is very, very vital. And I'd like to just share an example and you've got your notes, and I think they are pretty straightforward. And we'll, we'll answer some of the questions that maybe some folk can get stuck on. But I remember when I got saved back in 1982, some of you weren't born back then, but I got saved, wonderfully born again. And I remember that was on the, uh, November the 14th. And then December, 
my mom, who was living in Secunda at that time, um, she wanted to come to Durban because I told her, mom, I'm getting baptized. And she said, what? You were christened as a baby. I mean, we were Roman Catholics and not very good practicing Roman Catholics, I might add. But anyway, I said to her that I was getting baptized and she wanted to come down because she thought I was in some cult or, or something like that. So she came. And that Sunday, she was determined to come. And back then, we were still in the old, uh, in the embassy theater. And the place was jam-packed. And I remember her walking in that place and her eyes as big as saucers, never ever seeing almost 2,000 people that had gathered there for a Sunday church service. I mean, where did you ever hear of such a huge number of people? Anyways, to cut a long story short, when Pastor Fred gave the altar call, she, you know, there were tears streaming down her eyes and she went down to the front and she got marvelously saved and um, wonderfully saved on that on that Sunday and then and then I ministered to my elder sister she got saved my younger sister got saved but my dad was a problem man oh man and uh, as you might know or might not know I was raised up by my grandparents who lived in Durban so every holiday school holiday and university holiday I would travel up and spend time with my folks in Secunda. And my dad, I would preach to him. I would minister to him. And we would end up having arguments. And, and uh, it, I mean, for two years, we really battled. And uh, Trana, and he wasn't all that religious either. He just was, you know, digging in his heels and, 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 and so on and so forth. But I remember praying for my dad. And... Uh, I was just a brand new believer, didn't know too much about faith and how to, you know, you pray once and then you start thanking the Lord. I didn't know all of that. And and every time I'd come before the Lord, I'd say, Lord, oh, please save my dad. And I'd go through the whole thing. And the one day I felt like the Lord was like kind of, I could see him with his arms folded and he was like tapping his foot and like saying, you know, um, are, you, are you quite finished with your ritual? And... And I could feel that he was like a little bit, almost, if I can say, impatient with me. And as I was thinking about this, the words like flooded in my heart. And I, and I heard him saying, when are you going to stop asking me for a salvation and begin to thank me? Mm. And when he said that to me, it was like instantly two things happened. I, had, I, I was supercharged with the faith that could believe that even my cats and my dogs and a stone could get saved. I mean, that's how much faith I had. And coupled to that, here in front of me in a vision, I saw my dad saved. I saw him with his Bible. I saw him playing the piano. I saw him going to church. I saw him around. And so every time I'd come to pray for my dad, I wouldn't begin to ask him, oh, God, save my dad. You know, you died for the whole world. And I would just begin to thank God. And I would see the picture of my dad with his Bible, serving God, playing the piano. And there were times where I would rejoice. It was so real to me that I would dance in my room and I would rejoice. And I'd phone my mom and, and guess what? My dad was still not saved. But that didn't deter me. That didn't stop me. But I can tell you, I did that for uh, two weeks. And on the second, the end of the second week, I'll never forget my mom called me and she said, guess what? I said, what, mom? She says, your father has given his heart to the Lord. Wonderful. And that was as a result of my change in the way that I prayed. So, family, I want to encourage you. Praying for save, uh, uh, um, uh, our loved ones that are unsaved is very, very critical. How you pray for them is very important. And tonight, we're going to just touch on that. And the first aspect, when it comes to pray, you've got to pray believing. I mean, you have to pray believing because, yeah. you know, faith is the essence of uh, without faith, it's impossible to please God. And my believing is an indication of where my faith is. Right. So you pray believing and Mark eleven twenty four in the New King James Version, or I think it's the King James Version. No, it's the New King James says, therefore, I say unto you, what things soever you desire when 
you pray. Okay, that's it should be the new King James. I think that's the old King James. Ye yeah. pray, ye desire, yeah. and ye pray. Believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. All right. So you have to pray believing. Now here are some questions that we've posed here. How do I pray believing for an unbeliever? Mm. Well, you you pray believing for that unbeliever. You pray believing that it's the will of God, which it is. Jesus didn't die for a group of people. He didn't die for a thousand people. He didn't die for 144,000 people like some people teach from the book of Revelation. He died for the whole world. Yeah. Is the whole world going to get saved? I don't know. Absolutely. But quite honestly, I'm praying and believing like as if the whole wide world is going to mm. pray. Because hell was never created for humanity. Hell was created for Satan and his angels. And there's a scripture that's not in here that I just want to interject with. And it's found in 2 Corinthians 4 verse 4. And uh, Paul writes here and he says, Who's the God of this world, whose minds the God of this age has blinded, yeah. who do not believe less that the light of the gospel of the glorious of the glory of Christ, who is in the image of God, mm. should shine on them. That's in the new uh, King James. That's but, good. Yeah. And I believe that when we pray for our lo uns unsaved loved ones, we need to say, Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you that that mind that, that the God of this world has blinded. Mm. I thank you, Father, for the light of your word and the light of your truth to shine that's good. into their yeah. minds in Jesus' name. Because exactly. that's what the God of this world has yeah. done. Because you, you're praying and you He's think, but, yeah, mm. how do you not understand this? It's so simple. It's mm. a simple gospel. And yet they can't understand it. And it's because the God of this world has blinded their minds so they can't see the truth of God's word. So when we pray, we need to say, devil, in Jesus' name, you take your hand off their mind we thank you father that the light of your truth shall yeah. shine into you come against the spirit of deception Christian, that's right because that's they that's deceived and into not knowing the truth of God's so word. that's very very powerful but also here the person i'm trusting god for is so far gone it seems impossible for them to serve god how do i put that aside and believe that they will be saved well, that's what I had to do with my dad because every time I'd have a conversation with him, boy, it just seemed to get worse. And and, and like I said, he wasn't religious. It wasn't mm -hmm. like he was in church, in the Catholic church every Sunday. He, I mean, he was the last one to go to church. Uh, we all were like that. But I, I just, I just, I had that vision of him. I had that picture of him because you can't look at the natural. I mean, mm. you're praying, don't look at what is happening to that individual. You don't know what God is doing, doing deep in his heart or in her heart. And you have to cultivate that picture of that person. Even like when you're praying for salvation, and you're praying for your job, you have to see yourself in that job, driving that car. You, and, and that's what the power of imagination, because that's what faith does. Faith is basically has the power to paint on the canvas of your imaginations these visions because god speaks to us in picture form that's what dreams and visions are dreams and visions are the language of the that's holy right. spirit and god speaks to us in picture form so cultivate a picture of that person's sake irrespective of what you are seeing in the natural and never underestimate what the holy spirit is doing because yeah you're you not know, the, we're not we're the, not holy, the spirit. holy spirit and and we think we're praying and nothing's happening, but you don't know what the Holy Spirit's doing in that person's heart, um, you know, convicting and just, you know, pricking and saying, you know, if you've dropped that little seed and now they're remembering that little seed, yeah. you know, so a lot of times we give up because we think, oh, well, I can't see any changes, but you don't know what you the, don't know what's never happening behind underestimate the yeah. what the holy spirit is doing behind the scenes because yeah. he's bringing this one and he's bringing that one and god is at work god is always work god is always at work he's and you know what work. i find that when it comes to family and relatives somehow they are a lot more hesitant to receive from you yeah and it's and almost like you you are else. saying exactly the same thing and somebody else from their work 
or from their neighborhood who's safe will come and say exactly what you're saying and they respond. And and I think you just have to factor that in that especially family and relatives will Mm. always, because they see you as, you know, how you were before and uh, who are you to tell me? I mean, I'm older than you and all of that kind of a stuff. So uh, that's very important. Here's the next question I've been praying, believing for years and still have not seen my loved ones saved, okay? Now, the Lord spoke to me years ago about this one, and he said to me, you know, when a, when a, when a, when a woman falls pregnant, there's nine months in which the, the, the baby is, is conceived in the womb, and then after nine months, sometimes it's a little bit before, sometimes a little bit after, but after nine months, the baby comes. Hmm. And the Lord said to me, there are a lot of believers that are not intentional intentional about realizing the salvation of the people that they're praying. In other words, we have to be intentional and expect. I'm expecting the person that I'm praying. We don't pray and pray and pray and pray and pray and pray. And a thousand years later, we're still praying. No, God hears our prayers he's a god that has eyes that sees ears that can hear mouth that can speak we're not praying to an idol we're not praying to a dead god he is the god of the living Mm -hmm. but the way that the lord said to me he said when nine months are up the couple expects the baby to be delivered so you 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 have to press in and and the woman the the wife you know who's going to give birth she she she's intentional about it she has to prepare she goes to the hospital she has a midwife i mean there's there's an intentionality about bringing forth what has been conceived in her womb the same with us when we conceive the salvation of those that we're praying for we have to be intentional about them getting saved i'm not going to wait till 2030 or 2045 no in the name of jesus we're going to realize the salvation of our loved ones. And how do we do that? Not by, you know, begging and pleading, but again, thanking God and standing on that word, realizing that it is the will of God for every human being to get saved. Mm. And I think that's critical. If you doubt, if you're hesitant about that, you're not sure about that. I think that's where the enemy can come and, and so rob great. that yeah, you know, and rob that and and steal that miracle from you okay so here is also another point about praying you pray realizing not just believing that believing that with god all things are possible and i think that's i mean nobody can explain how is it that a person is born again it's the miracle of all miracles it truly is it is um so uh, we we believe that with God, all things are possible. Here's a question. How can I encourage my faith to remind myself that with God, all things are possible, especially when people I'm trusting God for seem to be getting worse off? <laughs> Again, we walk by faith and not by sight. So if you're, if you're looking in the natural, and it's exactly where we are today in this day and age with this pandemic and this COVID thing. I mean, if you get your eyes off the word and off the Lord, I'll tell you what, it won't be long before you are riddled with fear and doubt. And you and I've heard so many people say, this is God's judgment on mankind. Man, it is not God's judgment on mankind. I know people that serve God, love God, trust God, are righteous before God, who landed up with COVID. Mm. So, I mean, how is that? So it, it's not the judgment of God. Get that into your heart and into your mind understand it is the will of god for every single person to get saved we don't look at the natural we look into the spirit realm we look at god's word we keep our eyes focused on jesus Mm -hmm. and he does the work all right pray asking uh asking god for god's glory to be revealed in their salvation Pray asking for God's glory to be revealed. And um, like we said last week, you know, when you're witnessing to people, and again, it's not about how much Bible do you know and how much theology Mm. you know. We used to go in the beachfront and end up having arguments 
And uh, I'd come back so frustrated until the Lord said to me, like, what did you achieve today? You, you couldn't even witness to others who were walking by because you were so arguing with that one person kept you engaged for about an hour. And there were about 10 other people that walked past that I was actually hoping that you would speak to them. But because you were arguing, you, you missed out on that. So we, we, we befriend people. And, and I think it's important that, um, you know, if, 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 if your style, if you are secure in your salvation, then, um, and what you experience the encounter, I know my encounter with God was not fabricated. It wasn't something that, you know, what did I really experience that I know on the 14th of November, 1982, I had an encounter with God and, and many encounters after that. And my prayer for people that don't know the Lord is God, give them an encounter like mine, if not even more radical, because God wants to encounter people. He wants to overwhelm them, not with your goodness, not with all of your flowery doctrine and theology. That's not going to save people. It's God giving them an encounter. And you must pray. If this God is real to you and you have tasted and seen that the Lord is good, then pray. Pray that they feel God. Pray that they experience God. And pray I think, that. And I think the thing that people want to feel and experience is the love of God. Yeah. And that's the most important thing. I think when you got saved, you mentioned that when the guy was talking you just had the wave upon wave of love and when you're praying for somebody you know the bible says that there's people and thousands of people in the valley mm -hmm. of decision and there's people in this valley and they don't know what to decide and as we pray and as we intercede the love of god rises in our hearts for them because that's the you know it's no good going and condemning and saying you're going to help but it's the love of God yeah, that the draws love of God. This, people this, this God to that him. we serve is real. Yeah, it's the love of and, God. And, and, and the Bible says if we don't show people love, it's like we're just clanging gongs and symbols. And then we, we're sprouting and out a we, whole lot of theology yeah, and, and a lot of cliches, you know. And, and there's a and lot the of cliches, can do that. And, a lot of yeah. and the cliches won't say, and here's what I want to just encourage people. You know, if you're having encounters with God, I'm not saying every day, but on a regular basis. Then let me tell you, people, they will feel something different about you without even you opening your mouth. Mm. They will know that there's something about you and what is it about you? And eventually they'll understand it's about this God that you're trying to tell us about. So um, that's very important. Let's look at then uh, uh, questions here. Um, um, the person that I trusted God for is now saved. However, I prayed asking for this in their lives and their lives are the complete opposite. They are saved, but don't live an upright love. Christian uh, and, life. And they don't live an upright Christian life. Is this my fault? Did I pray correctly? Is this a result of a lack of faith? No. Man, you know what? Um, I, I, I wouldn't bring that... <laughs> That's condemnation, condemnation and guilt yeah. you know romans 8 and 1 says there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in christ jesus who do not walk and carries on who do not walk according to the flesh but who walk according to the spirit for the law of the spirit of life in christ jesus has made me and you free from the law of sin and death so we pray and we believe, just like with healing as well. We pray and believe God for healing. Some people are healed. Some people die after we pray, but that doesn't stop us from Correct. praying. And certainly I don't feel guilt and condemnation. The devil might want to come and put that on you. And we don't know what the end result of that individual is. And you can't and walk somebody's Christian life for, for them. them. But the other Everybody thing is... Everybody makes their own decisions in life. They may have got saved. And then it says here, um, you know, they're not, they got saved. And then they're not walking Christian lives. And the Bible says that you and I need to work out our own salvation yeah. with fear and, and trembling. trembling. So you can't let other people's walk with God 
um, you know, actually say that it's something that you've done wrong or whatever. You know, that's and I think really that's fair. the beauty that's a choice about that we have to make every day. Yeah, You've but I think it's pray. also the, the beauty to... about, you know, is this person in a good church and a mm. Bible faith filled church, a spirit moving church? I mean, that's what is very and that's important because salvation is one thing. And then off and then, and then that's then it's the Deliverance growing, the, the maturity that comes and the mm. church that you land up in is is important in determining how you grow and the outcome and all of that all right um okay let's move along it says here be steadfast in prayer what does be steadfast in prayer mean it means that you are praying 24 hours seven days a week 365 <laughs> no, days a year no <laughs> no it just means that you know over and above of having your quiet time with the Lord. And I really believe in having a, a time in the day, whether it's in the morning, at night, in the afternoon, but a time where you are completely shut away from everything and everything else. And, um, but over and above that, during your day, you know, you, you're still communing with God. I'm still hearing, I mean, I'm cooking or, well, not cooking, but cooking? <laughs> sometimes I, I like to cook if I'm brying or I'm yeah. doing something, okay. whatever it is, which is minimal, but whatever, you know, anyways, or, or I'm in the garden or, you know, whatever it is that I'm doing, I'm, I'm conversing with God. Doesn't mean to say that I only converse with God in my quiet time. And I think being steadfast in prayer is just, you know, being open to be able to communicate, to hear God's voice and respond during the entirety of your day. Mm. And then when you go to sleep, your body's sleeping, but your spirit man is still alive. So, um, you know, trust and believe that you're communing with God, that God's giving you dreams and visions. And so I think in steadfast and pray doesn't mean that you're praying for 12 hours and you're shut away and your kids don't see you. And I mean, there are times when you can do that and you mm. should do that. But I think steadfast and prayer is just a continual Community. in my day-to-day -day life. I'm, I'm aware of God. I'm aware of his presence. I'm, I'm hearing his voice. I'm communing with him. I'm standing in, in the queue to get some food at, at, at McDonald's or wherever. And I'm, and I'm, and maybe my wife is with me or my kids are with me and I'm fellowshipping with them and talking with them. But at the same time, I'm also hearing from God. So we're never, ever shut off from God. God wants to communicate with us. And that's really what being steadfast in prayer is. And I think also a consistent time where you are committing yourself to God. So um, I was taught that when we pray and ask God for something once, we don't, we don't have to keep asking him for it. Well, that's what I learned with my dad. And then after that, I, I heard he Pastor Bray teaching on that. And that is very true. We ask once and then, and I think we have to have the conviction. You know, when you asking God, there needs to be the faith needs to be generated because what is it that, what is it that made my dad's salvation real to me? It was faith. That I, that I got this revelation that, you know what, I asked once and now I need to thank God. And when I thank God, my eyes were opened and I could see my dad saved. And, uh, and, and every time I prayed for him, I just went straight to that picture of seeing him saved, holding the Bible. And I just, I, and it, it's, it seemed illogical for me to ask him to get saved when I could see him saved, even though in reality, it wasn't, and it took two weeks for that to take place. Um, so um, I think that that is uh, some important things when it comes to praying for us, uh, uh, the uh, salvation, you know, of our loved ones and families and friends. And right at the end here, the Vision Connection, the Fran Plan will help guard your outreach. The Fran Plan is if for friends, relatives, mm -hmm. associates, and neighbors mm -hmm. really it's just anybody that the lord sends across your path because the people in my world are not the people in your world and there's a reason why certain people are crossing paths with you yeah and i think if you would just be aware of that and the pressure isn't so much i need to go out and witness you know i need to hand out 20 tracks today i think 
what is beautiful is that as the people come that are directed by God, nine out of 10 times, those people will are coming to you because you have the answer. They're coming to you because somehow God sent them along your path and you have the ability to minister to them and share the wonderful good news with them. And remember we said last week, if it's good news to you, it'll be good news to them as well. So I want to encourage you, is the Bible good news to you? All right, are you still, are you, is, when last did you have an encounter with God? You can theorize and throw a whole lot of doctrine and theology. That's not gonna, and we should be doing this. And, and a lot of people are here, we should be doing this. Hey, are you actually yes. doing it? <laughs> If not, then, you know, <laughs> because you are either encountering God on a daily basis and you're, you're experiencing that love and you're experiencing that presence. And out of that, you're actually ministering. You can't minister out of theology because you've got three years of Bible school. Yeah. That's not going to help anybody. It'll get you in an argument. Um, and I've learned the hard Bible way. Bible school is good. Of course, it's, it's good. We are, we've we're, got a good Bible school. We have got a good Bible school. Studying the Word of God, Absolutely. We're doing it online. So, and you know what? The good. other thing is that, um, like we were saying, being reliant um, on God. It's not about you. It's not about your wisdom. It's That's not about right. how clever you are, and you know, you know so much, so much, so deep. It's it's the Holy Spirit, and every That's individual right. is different. And the Holy Spirit needs, you know, and he knows the needs mm. of those people. And so we, we, God, they've coming along your path because God wants you to minister to their needs. There's hurts, there's wounds, there's right. rejection. Things have happened to them as young kids uh, and whatever, whatever. And the Holy Spirit knows that. So every individual is different. And again, just steadfast in prayer means you're aware, hey, God speaking to me about this individual and mm. so on and so forth. So we want to encourage you. And we've got some exciting things lined up. This Sunday is going to be great. We're looking forward to seeing you uh, yes. eight o'clock uh, Sunday. But the following Sunday, we're going to have the communion drive through. And I yes. think that's going to be great. Um, and it's at 11, between 11 and 12. And okay. this time we're we're catering and, we've got and we are prepared, yes. hopefully. But the following Sunday after that, okay, so that's, I think, the last Sunday in August yes. is we are gearing up. The plans are in motion. The wheels are oh, moving. Training. And we are planning to do okay. two drive-in drive -in services. services, okay? So it'll be, so basically... And it's going to be a state-of-the-art type of service. It's yeah, a surprise so we're you're still going to see. Working the logistics, working but the logistics, basically but there's going to be, it's on a first come first service yeah. and they'll send you emails and you will have to register. Yeah, We're going to have two car parks. Okay. Yeah. So the one car park where the stage will be, uh, we'll have all the cars fitted there. And then the other uh, car park, the grass overflow. one will be an overflow with a screen. Um, it will be nice to see everyone again and yeah. come and say hello. And, and we're going to run two services. It, yes. We're going to have an 8 o'clock and a 10.30 service as well. Okay. Yeah. So we want you just to start making preparations. And uh, if you want to get into the first car park, you got to get there early. And you have to respond. Uh, I think the emails are going to come yes. and you have to indicate. So once that car park is full, we then... But you have to respond to the email. You can't just rock up there. We'll let you know in exactly all the nuts and bolts because we wanted to work. And we've to got work. to do it within regulation. We have to do it within so regulation. Safety is safety. of utmost importance to us. Your safety is of utmost yes. importance. But just for you to know, and we're looking for So the 23rd is a communion service, a okay. drive through. But and then the did. next Sunday, two services in the morning. We're going to have a, 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 a drive in. Yeah, you stay in your just car. leave it like that you for stay every your Sunday, car. maybe. And we'll see how it goes. God willing, it's not going to rain. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to have great weather. But more importantly, uh, it's going to be great to be able to see your beautiful faces. Yes. And we really enjoyed the last drive through communion. Yes. All right. Seeing you all. So, you. Um, Joy, you're going to pray for the folks tonight? Yes. Before we go, let's do that. Heavenly Father, I just bring each and every person watching tonight yes. on this life group. 
um, sharing. And I thank you, Father, for health. I thank you for life. I thank you for peace. Mm. I thank you that as we pray for our loved ones, I thank you that we'll have a thankful heart, believing yeah. by faith that those loved ones are coming to know you in Jesus' name. We call them from the north, south, east, and west. Those ones that have maybe had hardened hearts, Father, I thank you that from tonight, those blinkers are going to fall off. Mm. Their minds are going to be open to the truth. And I thank you, Father, that those that are in the valley of decision, Father, they are going to make the decision to serve you. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are our comforter tonight. Thank you for each and every person. Mm. We go tonight in your name with your angels and the blood of Jesus covering us. In Jesus, Jesus name. name. Amen. Amen. And before we go tomorrow night, don't forget is blended. All yes, right. So we Friday do have night. blended on Friday nights uh, and that's for the young folks like us. So, yeah, so uh, we'll be. we look forward to seeing you there. But from all of us here, my wife and myself. Thank you and for all joining of us, us at our home tonight. Thank you so much. Good night and God Good bless night. you. God bless. Bye bye. Bye.